uh, we commenced uh, our conference yesterday uh, with various uh, presentations from uh, investment promotion agencies from uh, Tanzania, uh, Zanzibar, uh, Rwanda, uh, Uganda, and uh, and also uh, we discussed a lot of uh, opportunities that are um, uh, within um, each country uh, in terms of investments, uh, various sectors where we're covered, uh, various uh, incentives were also uh, showcased uh, in order to attract uh, investors. And we also discussed uh, uh, where where we can uh, how we can market um, our region as a single investment destination, and how we can uh, harmonize these incentives to ensure that uh, we attract investors as as a region. And today we are going to continue with the same. Uh, we're going to uh, listen to presentations from uh, the remaining uh, countries uh, that we had a plan to have. We're going to listen to a presentation from Kenya. Uh, from uh, Ethiopia, uh, South Sudan, uh, Burundi, and uh, DRC. So I'd, I'd really like to welcome you all. And uh, before we begin uh, our, our session, I would like to take you through a few ground rules uh, that are going to guide us uh, during uh, our, our meeting. Uh, so if you can project uh, the ground rules, Yeah, so first of all is a reminder to uh, mute our microphones. If you don't have the floor, kindly mute your microphone if you don't have the floor. And uh, I also reminded to please switch off uh, your video if you also don't have the floor. Uh, please contribute to uh, the meeting of uh, the meeting goals. And of course, we should uh, focus on the topic uh, that we're discussing uh, today. We're also reminded to please have uh, regional perspectives as we uh, go on in, in this meeting. And please, uh, all the questions uh, should be directed into the chat room. Uh, we have a team uh, at TABC uh, who would be collecting those and who, who would ask uh, other presenters uh, throughout the meeting. And of course, the meeting will be uh, recorded for reporting purposes and the report of the meeting will be uh, shared uh, right after the meeting. So moving on to uh, today's program, We'll just start with a brief uh, welcome remarks and also the introduction of uh, the presenters that we have today. And then we'll move uh, straight into the business of the day, which is uh, the presentations from the investment promotion uh, agencies on uh, the investment opportunities that are available in their specific countries. And of course, last but not least, uh, we'd have a Q&A session uh, right after the presentation. So if any question you're reminded to please uh, just post it in the chat room and uh, we'll turn to it uh, during the meeting. So without uh, further ado, uh, uh, I would like to uh, welcome uh, EABC ED who is also with us here uh, to give us his welcome uh, remarks. Thank you, Miriam. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. And thank you and good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you in a very special way on behalf of the chair of the Mrs. Council to welcome all of you to showcase what opportunities there are in East Africa in each of we listened to a number of countries today we listen to the other countries and see how we can have uh, increase in dry ESE trade because now even amid this COVID we need to adapt and see how as businesses we can still provide leadership and continue working closely with governments of the ESE to ensure that we overcome the challenges of, uh, of COVID. I was um, excited to listen to cases yesterday of all the partner state opportunities that exist in the in of Tanzania, Zanzibar, Uganda, and so forth. So today we'll be able to listen to others. And let's see how we could, as we close the year, try to start thinking about to prepare rebounds as we go to 2021. 
how do we start working closer together as private sector and governments uh, to ensure that we have a truly integrated the East African community. Even as we approach SFTA, we need to be more united. And therefore, as uh, Chair made remarks yesterday, today is unable to join, but I want to welcome all of you and will be keen to listen uh, what opportunities that exist in each of the partner states that uh, are represented in today's uh, uh, conference event. I thank you and most welcome. Uh, thank you very much, um, Idi, uh, for those um, yeah. welcome yeah, yeah. remarks. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Idi, uh, for uh, those welcome remarks. I think you have stressed uh, on the fact that uh, it is uh, uh, without a doubt that uh, East African economies uh, have been uh, affected uh, by uh, COVID-19 due to how we, we are linked into the, the global economy. And of course, uh, foreign direct investment was uh, uh, one of, of uh, the, the drivers of developing countries, but it was also uh, affected. So I think moving forward, it is uh, important for us to, to market uh, the opportunities that are there to ensure that uh, we still attract uh, FDI into our country. We still uh, uh, improve uh, the business environment and the investment climate as we uh, continue to uh, retain it invest and head to the African continental free trade area we ensure that uh, the EAC is positioned well to uh, take advantages of that. So before we begin I would just like to uh, make sure that our presenters are all here. Uh, so if, if I mention your name you can just uh, uh, raise your hand or, or just uh, 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 confirm if you're here. I would, I would like to start with uh, Mr. Guracha Adi uh, from uh, Ken Invest. Are you with us? Uh, yes, morning. I'm here. I'm here. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have uh, Mr. Ntidendereza uh, from Burundi. Uh, are you with us? I think uh, maybe is uh, uh, joining. I uh, would also like to confirm if uh, Honorable Abraham Mamer is here from South Sudan. All right, I also have a representative of uh, Leslie Mem from uh, Ethiopia Investment Commission. Is the representative here? Yes, I'm here. Without ado, uh, I think uh, we can re begin our program. Uh, Mr. Guracha Adi, uh, I would like to welcome you uh, to proceed with the presentation on uh, investment opportunities in Kenya. I think you can just share your presentation and uh, have the floor. Welcome very much. Uh, maybe you can guide me. I had shared my presentation with uh, with you. Is it? Was, I don't know what was the intention. Was it to share from your end, or I do it from my side? Yeah. If if you can project from your side, Mr. Guriacha, that would be more efficient. I am finding it difficult. These uh, teams does not have uh, an icon to show share screen. Yeah, it's just next to the button. I, yes, I have seen, I have seen. 
Okay. okay. Can you proceed? Uh, let me know if you are actually, if you are seeing my screen, then let me know. Are you seeing it on your side? Not yet. Just give me one second. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, Mr. Guracha. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I've asked for somebody, my IT person to assist me, just shortly. I'm supposed to share with you. You got it? Hello? Yes, it's visible now. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Um, so for those ones who have not heard my name, my name is Guracha Hadi. I'm a general manager in charge of investor services at Kenya Investment Authority. I'm here representing Dr. Moses Ikiara, who would have been here but uh, has other engagement. And my presentation will be on uh, investment uh, opportunity in Kenya, but I'll be able to maybe just scan through other areas of uh, Kenya, uh, which would be important for investors. Of course, that is where Kenya is located, with our GDP, FDI uh, growth, and the uh, FDI stock in the year 2019. And with our population, the youthful population, which in other words, will be representing a workforce that will be you know, more productive for any investor locating in the, in the country. Um, now, our economic growth has been consistent. For the last uh, 10 years, Kenya has been growing at an average of 5.5%, and it's one of the most uh, important economy, the dominant for that matter, within the East Africa region, uh, contributing more than 45% to the region's uh, GDP. And it's the third largest economy in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, our population has, uh, you know, a very growing uh, middle uh, income uh, population, hence making, you know, consumption uh, more. Now, these are some of the multinationals which have headquarters in Kenya. And uh, we are looking actually for more in our strategic plan. We want to ensure that uh, most 50% of the multinationals locating within the African continent in Kenya. And we have a strategy for this. Um, our business environment has been improving. The government has been putting more effort in uh, making sure that uh, business environment is conducive to uh, private sector to thrive. And one of the areas which shows this is uh, Kenya for the last for the last seven years has with the World Bank doing business indicators has grown has improved from position 170 in 2012 to 56 in the year 2019. This is uh, moving like 114 uh, position. And, and there's a deliberate uh, reason behind this, that uh, the government has set up a unit that purposely focuses on private sector 
and areas where they see things are not moving. And uh, so there has been an incremental uh, improvement year in, year out. On the logistics wise, also in the same breath, we have from position uh, in 2012, we were 122 as a country uh, to position 68 in 2018, moving uh, 54 places. And uh, the same, if you also look at our ICT, uh, Kenya is actually an innovation hub in, uh, in the region. And in terms of even mobile penetration, we are Saharan of 74.4 to Kenya is 81.3. And uh, because of this, the, the mobile sector innovation is actually very high. And uh, that is why even MPESA, um, uh, which has now become uh, areas which most of the countries borrow from, actually started here, and Kenya has been innovating more on this. We have very large pool, a large pool of uh, youthful, productive, uh, and skilled labor force, uh, which is very productive. And uh, any investor locating here will not have short office that will enable what he plans to do. Now, on the market access, I think we've been doing very well within the ESC, of course, Comesa and Agoa. And even yesterday, we have signed with the UK, uh, EPA, Economic Partnership Argument, which is aimed at, you know, uh, market access for anybody uh, locating within the territories of uh, Kenya. Now, if you look at our performance in on business environment and competitiveness, there are a number of things we wanted to share here that Kenya for the last three years in a row has been num ranked number one in financial inclusion by Brookings Institution and uh, also ranked number one globally in protection of minority investors in global competitive index. This is by World Economic Forum. Nairobi is ranked leading business travel destination in 2019. Uh, Kenya is the only Microsoft uh, testing center uh, in Africa and one of the only four in the world. Uh, Kenya ranked second in leading innovation hub in Sub-Saharan Africa. And FDI intelligence, another assessment of uh, attractiveness to FDI ranks Kenya among the top three uh, to five in Africa. Nairobi as the leading hub for impactful uh, investors. Now at Kenya Investment Authority, we have uh, two platforms which uh, provides very vital information to potential investors across the world. One is the e-regulation, which has uh, over 170 procedures published uh, for any investor to see how do I invest in, how do I invest in say pharmaceutical sector, in agriculture, in manufacturing, in any subsector, we'll be able to find this on the procedures here uh, you know, uh, listed and with the possible steps that one needs to go through. Then the other uh, platform, which is also very crucial for investor, is what we call investment uh, e-opportunities portal. Here we have uh, profile projects, uh, which any investor around the world will be able to see what opportunities exist in Kenya and with all the important parameters investors need to see in an investment project. Currently, we have over 350 projects uploaded and mostly in this and in uh, Of course, investing in Kenya, uh, we want to make it uh, crystal clear that uh, your investment will be, uh, uh, will be protected in the sense that uh, the Kenya as a country has no foreign exchange uh, control since the year 1994. 
allowing full repatriation or part repatriation after payment of the necessary uh, taxes. Um, there are no, no investors uh, property is uh, uh, you know, processed by the government. So uh, there's that protection as a member of uh, EXIT, International Center for uh, Settlement of Any Investment Disputes. And uh, our constitution uh, also guarantees the private uh, property. Now, we have uh, Vision 2030 and uh, has uh, laid a number of, uh, yeah, marked a number of uh, sectors which are priority for us as a country to fast track and uh, our economic uh, development agenda. This ranges from manufacturing, uh, tourism, agriculture, trade, now financial services, business process uh, outsourcing, and we had uh, two entries, uh, this blue economy and oil and gas as the new sectors within the vision 2030. Now, currently we are promoting uh, what we call B4 agenda. This is by way of trying to fast track the achievement of vision 2030. And in the B4 agenda, we have manufacturing, food security, affordable housing, and uh, universal healthcare. In the manufacturing, we are looking to grow uh, the contribution of manufacturing sector from the from the current 9% to 15% by the year 2022, and also adding uh, approximately about two to three billion dollars of uh, uh, investment uh, to the economy. And uh, the food security, we are looking to ensure that 100% food and nutrition security for all Kenyans. And then under the affordable housing, we're looking to develop innovative uh, affordable housing and increase real estate contribution of construction sector to GDP from the current 7% to 14% by the year 2022. Then under the universal healthcare, we're looking to ensure that there's 100% cover for all Kenyans under the uh, NHIF, National Hospital Insurance Fund, then also to bring in as much needed investment uh, in the health sector to uh, make the accessibility and affordability uh, of uh, health uh, services or healthcare to people. Now, under the manufacturing sector, we have uh, six subsectors this style and apparel data uh, processing, manufacture of construction materials, agro-processing, heavy industry, this oil and gas, mining and oil and steel, ICT products and services, where we are looking to uh, promote you know, investment in our SCZ, that is the special economic zones, and uh, in the export processing zones. Now, the, and, uh, the, uh, during, the post, uh, during COVID and post-COVID, we have a number of investment opportunities that have come up. Um, uh, a number of also entrepreneurs have taken advantage of this in Kenya. This is under the chemical and cosmetics. We have seen manufacture of liquid disinfectants, alcohol-based sanitizers, and uh, the textiles and apparel. A number of companies have come up with manufacturing of uh, personal protective cover uh, equipment, gloves, face masks, surgical gloves, uh, gown, and surgical caps have been done by local and opportunities it still exist here. Pharmaceutical, this is of course manufacture of drugs, consumables, diagnostic equipment, which a number of companies have taken advantage like chemical reagents and infrared uh, thermometer. Under the metal and the allied uh, tech equipment, electronics, manufacture of uh, clinical care equipment, oxygen cylinders, uh, regulators, ICU beds and stretchers, isolation tents, powered air and purifying respirator and uh, ventilators. These have been 
and not for this locally here, but of course, opportunities for more and uh, specialized uh, production still exist. Now, if we, what I've explained earlier and the manufacturing fits very well within our EPZ and uh, uh, SEZ. And um, we have a number of incentives which make it uh, lucrative for investors to, to, to invest in this area. And uh, one of it is uh, investment deduction. This is where you get 50% in the first year of use and 25% in the residual per year on reducing balance. Of course, under the, after the value addition within our see uh, under the other markets duty-free, uh, the preferential 40% local procurement uh, by the Kenyan government uh, institutions under the Public Procurement and Disposal Act, which gives advantage to investors who locate within the country. Uh, and then, of course, exemption from pre-verification on conformity of raw materials and machineries for use uh, for manufacture of this registered uh, uh, by registered local manufacturers. And we have uh, incentives listed there for SEZ and, uh, of course, also for EPZ. I may not necessarily need to go through my presentation, I understand, will be shared. Uh, you find uh, in the, 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 on the map here, we have uh, where our EPZs and uh, SEZs are located. Currently, we have uh, nine gazetted special economic zones. Five of them are privately owned and four public. The public ones are one in Dongokundu, which is in Mombasa. Konza, which is about 60 kilometers from Nairobi on the way to on Mombasa Road. Naivasha, then Lamu, and then we have 74 gazetted uh, EPZs, uh, 69 of them are privately owned, and five are in uh, public zones, and we have over 137 enterprises operating within those uh, zones. Under the affordable housing, we have uh, to we develop our objective is to develop uh, afford innovative, affordable housing and uh, about 500,000 units and increase real estate uh, and construction sector contribution to GDP 7%. Housing units deficit uh, annually and uh, most of the uh, informal settlement or which people refer to as the slums need to be upgraded and so because of this a number of opportunities exist the development of uh, affordable housing to cater for the needs of low income setting up of factories for industrial building systems financing of affordable housing and the joint venture opportunity with county government and uh, construction and operation of mass rapid trans uh, transit systems within the urban centers. Now, there's a 15% corporate tax, which is an incentive for anybody who develops 100 hundreds, uh, units and above uh, within uh, the country. Now, under the food and uh, nutrition security, we have a high proportion of, of course, population, you know, access or maybe right uh, proportion or right quality of food. So we are looking at large scale and commercial agricultural production, uh, production of agricultural inputs, manufacture, distribution and direct sales of fertilizers, high quality animal feeds, pesticides and uh, certified seeds and livestock feeds uh, meals. Also, uh, assembly or leasing of uh, agricultural equipment, an operation of warehousing, cold storage, dryers, and you know, assembly of tractors uh, and all that. Agricultural support services, like uh, dairy processing, 
and cold chain development are some of the other uh, opportunities within food and nutrition and security. And uh, universal healthcare, we have uh, currently about 16.5 million Kenyans are the ones who are covered. Uh, and the target is to have about 35 million by the year, uh, uh, by the year 2022, we are looking at our population will be around uh, 51, but we are targeting at least 35 million uh, population. This sector is a very important sector to the economy. It its value is about $3.5 billion and contribute approximately about 6% to the GDP. And we have opportunities in uh, enhanced low cost private insurance cover uh, and schemes, private health facilities, provision of medical commodities and equipment, and digitalization of uh, healthcare, uh, and, and e.g. the supply chain and uh, telemedicine. We have a number of Kenyans seeking specialized uh, medical uh, treatment abroad, uh, 10,000 a year. But we do also have receive about 3,000 to, 3, to 5,000 uh, from the region who are coming to Kenya to seek uh, specialized medical treatment. So as a country, we, need, we are looking at you know, establishing specialized hospitals uh, where people are going to see for medical uh, treatment elsewhere in the world so that we increase medical tourism opportunity in Kenya. We have Lapset, which is one of the uh, biggest uh, 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 project in uh, Africa. And uh, currently, a number of uh, uh, projects working within the Lamu port is really ongoing. And um, one of the things is to have highways uh, links to port uh, from the Lamu port to the Addis Ababa railway, bilateral agreement signed with Kenya and Ethiopia. Uh, the port is already underway. And uh, the SCZ is sort of already explained. One of them is already located there. Then we have also oil pipeline from the port to Awasa in Ethiopia. And uh, regional airports are also coming up in uh, around taking advantage of this in the Siolo. Uh, and of course, there in Awasa, Siolo airport is already completed. And uh, the Lokuchogyo one is already uh, is constructed by private sector to be constructed by a private sector. Now, we also have a silicon with a number of opportunities. It's 5,000 acre developed in different in places. We have research centers, opportunities for research centers, universities and schools, offices and technology, media, sports and entertainment, light industries. There's also residential uh, apartments, international hospitals, and hospitality industries all in one. And so an opportunity, this one is a very lucrative opportunity for any investor interested. Now, having said uh, all this, I would want to also indicate once an investor, having seen those opportunities and choosing Kenya, uh, what can invest as an organization can do. Uh, one of the things we do, our functions are listed here. We actually promote Kenya as an investment destination, but the most important bit we do for investor is we facilitate investors once they choose Kenya. And then, and the facilitation is done through a one-stop shop. And you know, the next slide. Thereafter, we have, uh, aftercare services where we still touch base with investor with a view to encouraging them to invest and uh, take advantage of other upcoming opportunities uh, within the economy. Of course, we are a voice of private sector and government. Anything we find, any feedback we find from investors that the 
things are not working or where investors feel need to be uh, reformed, we actually then do policy recommendation to government with a view to changing and uh, make the investors located in Kenya to be competitive locally and uh, internationally. Within the one-stop center, we have uh, a number of agencies that have already uh, seconded staff so that we have provide streamlined and coordinated service to investors from company registration to pin registration, uh, anything on uh, uh, the immigration need, work permit, special pass, then from environmental perspective, the environmental impact assessment uh, certificate. We do have also, we work very closely with our EPZ and SEZ also located within uh, our one-stop center. Then the land, land registration, power connection, and also social security registration. All this uh, we do within the one-stop center. But there are other agencies which are not yet there, but we do have also contact people who will be able to fast track any requirement by investors within their uh, agencies. Now, that is my presentation. If you think investment within the region, make it Kenya. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Guracha. Uh, you, you've covered uh, a lot of things on, on the opportunities that are available uh, in Kenya. I would just like to remind uh, all the participants here, if you have any question uh, with regards to uh, the presentation that has already been made, uh, kindly uh, put it on the chat and uh, we'll address it uh, uh, in, during the Q&A session. Uh, now I would like to uh, welcome uh, a representative from the Ethiopian uh, Investment Commission who will be representing uh, Madam Leslie Mem. Uh, so uh, please uh, welcome and proceed with uh, sharing your presentation. Thank you. Let me share you my... I'm sharing your presentation, please wait me. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Hello. Um. Is well, it visible looking, now? You are looking now. No, maybe you can uh, now open the presentation. Right now, we are looking at, at the folder. Uh, are, are you looking at my presentation now? Is it shared? No, we are looking at the folder that has the documents. Maybe you can now uh, open the presentation.
Yes, it is visible now. It's visible? Okay. Okay, thank you uh, very much for having me. Uh, this uh, wonderful uh, organization uh, regarding East African countries' investment uh, opportunities and incentives. My name is Astalo. Uh, I'm from Ethiopian Investment Commission, mainly in charge of working, uh, uh, promoting foreign direct investment. So let me begin uh, to highlight uh, my country's as a glance. Uh, Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, which is uh, our head of state, is uh, Her Excellency President uh, Sahal Warka Zaude, and uh, head of the government is uh, Prime Minister Dr. Abiy Ahmed. So uh, now uh, Ethiopia has nine, uh, now uh, we already have the new uh, regional states. Now we have 10 regional states and two city administrations. Uh, our system is parliamentary system. Uh, so our GDP uh, is now uh, uh, 107 billion and uh, the, uh, uh, the area is 1.1 million. <coughs> the population is, as you know, Ethiopia, the second populous country in Africa. Uh, the population growth is uh, 2.5 annum. So uh, life expectancy is 65. 65 five years. So this is uh, uh, Ethiopia as a glance. So uh, uh, the last five years, Ethiopia uh, is a strong economic growth and investment performance with an impressive and, uh, and growing uh, foreign direct investments before COVID, as you know all. So uh, um, the colleague from uh, Kenya is uh, really uh, ranking good. So we are in fields. So uh, we are, we, we, Ethiopia uh, was in, uh, in a good track uh, regarding uh, uh, FDI uh, the last five years. Uh, still, we are uh, uh, sustained to continue this uh, momentum. Uh, and uh, fourfold this increase in the FDI inflow over the last five years, uh, which means uh, it was uh, 1 billion USD to, uh, to change this one to. Uh, uh, 2 billion USD, and also much of uh, increase in FDI inflows uh, is attributable to investment in light manufacturing and Ethiopia's uh, industrial parks. Those are um, uh, the good history. Uh, so uh, uh, Ethiopia is uh, uh, one of the largest uh, recipient of foreign direct investment in Africa. Uh, as you can see from this, Ethiopia has attracted several global brands uh, highlighting in competitive investment opportunities. Those are some of uh, uh, the brand companies already investing here in Ethiopia. So now we are trying to sustain uh, this moment even after COVID. <clears throat> so uh, now uh, the government of Ethiopia is uh, uh, key government strategies have been undertaken. So building of success uh, on the past. So now we are we have uh, economic and investment reforms. Uh, the last two and a half years we have a new government structure. So we are under uh, reform. So we are reforming the whole uh, economic, uh, political, and uh, 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 other reforms. So now we are also uh, creating a conducive uh, enabling environment for foreign direct investment. And also uh, we have targeted investment priority areas, or we have priority areas based on the comparative and competitive uh, advantage of uh, the investors as well as the countries. So uh, those are <coughs> uh, some of uh, the reforms undergoing. So uh, we have a homegrown reform agendas with a set of a comprehensive and well uh, harmonized measures has been designed. So already uh, as macroeconomic reforms, uh, we are now correcting physical imbalance and control, controlling, controlling inflation. As you know, all based on the COVID impact, the inflation is very high. And also now we are uh, improving the access to uh, finance and ensuring to debit sustainability, sustainability. this uh, to become, build our confidence 
and also structural reform like easy of uh, easy of business uh, con constraints. So now uh, we are uh, aggressively working uh, make, uh, making uh, a conducive environment by uh, uh, correcting some measures uh, based on the World Bank uh, K indicators. So now uh, we are trying to uh, 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 make uh, easy of doing business which is led by the Prime Minister's office. <coughs> and this, this is a, a rebalance of goals and to enhance productivity. And the other one is structural reform. So this addresses uh, sector-specific institutional and market fail failures. So those uh, uh, comes to, uh, to create job because we are looking for investors uh, 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 for three main reasons. The first one is uh, to job creation, because unemployment is uh, very critical uh, as, as East Africa, as global even. So we are looking for investors for job creations. And the other one is to uh, uh, inclusive growth and also poverty reduction and creating a path of uh, prosperity. So uh, this is uh, one of uh, <coughs> our reasons. And to our, uh, uh, and also the other one is why we, why we are looking for investment is for technology transfers. Uh, technology is a very uh, key issue nowadays. So we assume foreign investors to come to invest in Ethiopia. They transfer new uh, know-how management and new technology for SMEs and the local investors. And the other reasons why we are looking for investment for uh, Ethiopia is to increase our foreign currency as well as for productivity because uh, we have the trade imbalance uh, so our export and our import is not uh, matched so now based on the homegrown reform agendas we are trying to, to set a comprehensive uh, harmonization measure, measures so uh, opening up of a country uh, economy is currently underway through k macroeconomic trade and regional uh, integration reforms. So we are uh, microeconomic uh, reform now, and also trade and regional integration reform and regulatory reform workers, especially in and also investment climate reforms. So we are under this reform uh, 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 reform uh, reforms. So this creates uh, yeah, it creates a good uh, environment for for investment after COVID. So regarding macroeconomic reforms aimed to uh, uh, correcting imbalance and safeguard macro financial stability, which requires strengthening of public sector finances and also correcting uh, physical imbalance, controlling the inflation, safeguarding of financial st stability, uh, improving access to finance, uh, developing capital markets. So regarding public finance reforms, mobilization of resources, increasing investment and the competition, enhancing uh, public-private uh, partnership. So this is uh, in general at macroeconomic uh, reform level. Regarding trade regional integration reforms, uh, as, as uh, the, the previous pre presenters uh, uh, said, Africa continental free trade uh, area is uh, very good opportunities uh, for us in a country. Uh, so it is 1.2 billion uh, population, or which means market. So this is also one of uh, uh, the integration reforms and also uh, World Trade Organization. Still, we are not uh, a member of uh, the WTO, but we are still uh, correcting some uh, and institutional and uh, uh, policy measures uh, undergoing. So Africa are uh, continental free trade areas, as you know all, and to create a single continental market for goods and of business persons and investment while accelerating the establishment of uh, a continual wide custom unions. And the other one is uh, uh, the signature and uh, ratification of uh, uh, Africa uh, uh, free uh, continental free trade areas and also unlocks market access potential as I mentioned was uh, 1.2 billion uh, markets 
sorry, guarding world trade organization now reinitiate the negotiation for accession and joint world trade accession agreement. And there are key points uh, bilateral market access and multilateral negotiations. Regarding regulatory frameworks, uh, reforms, so, uh, now we are revised the, the investment laws, or, or we are revising the investment proclamation and investment regulations, uh, aiming uh, around five uh, objectives. So the first one is to modernize investment regulatory uh, and administrative. And the other one is to align the investment uh, legal regime with recent changes and economic policy priorities. Uh, the other one is to revisit investment areas open for the private sector, coordinate uh, uh, and co uh, co 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 consolidate uh, 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 and also uh, rules of uh, investment and adopt best practice for efficient and investment administration services provision, including one-stop shop service and also uh, devise uh, faster and more uh, transparent investment grievance so uh, under uh, new investment regulations or investment areas moving from the positive list approach to negative list approach the previous uh, laws uh, already uh, uh, stated uh, all the allowed sectors for foreign investors now we categorize like this one we are reserved for a joint investment with the government only five sectors uh, those sensitive sectors like manufacturing of weapons and ammunition, which means missile and explosives, imports uh, and exports of electric uh, city, in electrical energy, international air transport service, bus rapid trans tra uh, transit, postal service, excluding courier service. Those uh, areas are only uh, uh, investment with government, joint investment with government, and also. Uh, uh, Joint investment with dom domestics only. Uh, we reserved seven sectors, uh, like those uh, freight uh, forward, uh, forwarding and uh, shipping agency service, domestic air transport service, cross country public transport service, uh, which means seating capacity greater than 45, and urban mass transport service, which means uh, large uh, uh, carrying capacity. Uh, ad advertisement, advertisement and promotion service. Uh, it was closed before those, uh, those uh, areas. Now it is open with a joint investment with uh, local investors and also uh, audiovisual service. This all, it was closed this one. Now it is opened and accounting and auditing service. So those uh, seven areas already uh, open for uh, uh, joint investment with uh, domestic investors. And also there are areas, which means by their nature, small scale uh, sectors, which means uh, banking, insurance, microfinance, uh, and also capital goods finance, business so still uh, reserved for locals, and wholesale trades, uh, and also retail trades, import trade, export trade, without uh, value addition, which means collected from the market and the hotel travel agency operating less of equipment transport service those and those areas are still reserved for locals so the new uh, investment regulation number 474 2020 uh, is detailed there are around 32 sectors already reserved for locals uh, other than this one, uh, it's open, so uh, you can uh, get it, uh, the new regulations uh, from our website. Uh, this is uh, the revised investment law uh, <coughs> in Ethiopia. So regarding the national initiative to improve ease of doing business is launched and over 80 reforms are undertaken currently. So our vision is placing Ethiopia among the top 100 doing business ranking countries by 2021 so already uh, started like starting of business uh, and also registering the property dealing with construction work permit kenya as uh, the previous presenter is in good position so now we are trying to uh, make sure for the investors uh, uh, correcting such uh, <coughs> uh, issues which means uh, getting credit paying taxes, trade access, uh, 
borders and resolving uh, insolvency and uh, enforcing uh, contractors. So now, uh, working on this, uh, and the Prime Minister is uh, uh, also uh, administrating uh, the issues. We have uh, a committee at national levels, so the Prime Minister is also uh, calling uh, this issue. So we are uh, have, uh, have vital reforms to date, includes, uh, as, as I mentioned before, so elimination of uh, requirements of uh, uh, newspaper publication, trade name, uh, and also uh, less agreement for business registration and licensing removed, implementing of one uh, uh, stop shop service, the Data Investment Commission already providing one stop shop service, and expansion of credit uh, registration uh, information, introduction of uh, modern and web-based uh, uh, custom uh, clearance and tax administrations, uh, and also uh, online permit application launches, strategy uh, timeline for construction permit. So those are some of the vital reforms uh, uh, going on. So uh, the Ethiopian Investment Commission is uh, uh, the lead institutions, uh, mainly uh, uh, mainly uh, uh, for foreign direct investments, uh, and also we have uh, priority sectors. Our priority sectors are already clearly uh, stated. So light manufacturing sector is one side, which means uh, textile and leather product processing. Those are the uh, light manufacturing sectors and export oriented sectors. We are highly appreciated and promote foreign direct investors to come and invest on those uh, sectors. Uh, we have industrial parks for those uh, uh, areas, uh, private industrial parks and also public industrial park, public industrial parks. So now already we have around 12 industrial parks. Uh, mainly uh, uh, for uh, facilitating uh, textile and the garment in the, in the leather and leather product sectors, and also for uh, integrated inter industrial parks in four regional states, for those to invest in the uh, agro processing sectors. Ethiopia, as you know, an agrarian country, our economy is still based on agriculture, so we have huge potential for. Uh, agricultural products, so we are exporting uh, agricultural products without value addition. Now we are uh, promoting uh, uh, agricultural products with value addition, with value propositions. So now promoting investors to invest in the agro processing sectors. The other one is uh, uh, ICT, Information Communication Technology, is one of the priority sectors. And also, uh, in fact, this is very uh, the, the key issue for investors. Uh, the other one is tourism. Tourism is also, we have one uh, uh, resource for tourism areas. So, and also uh, uh, energy. Energy Sorry. is, uh, energy is also uh, are not moving. So, shall I conclude? The slides are not moving, so we are unable to follow. Oh, really? Okay, sorry. I was stuck on uh, the improving the ease of doing business. Mm, okay, Why, what happens to me? What about now? Is it okay? Hello, Mr. Maria? Ms. Maria? Uh, we are looking at uh, the folder that has the documents. Maybe you click on the presentation now. So, is, is it visible now? 
which means the, the 14th slab, which means uh, reforms and investment committee and regarding the opportunities and uh, new priority sectors. No, we are looking at uh, has the documents, that has the presentations. What happened? So, so shall, I, shall I continue or what can we do? Hello, Maria. Miss Maria. Yes, we can we can continue. Yeah. So now uh, uh, I'm presenting with uh, strategic and uh, targeted investment priority sectors, uh, which means we have priority sectors, textile and uh, garment, leather and leather products, pharmaceuticals, agro processing, tourism and ICT and mining and energy. Those are the priority sectors based on the com uh, competitive advantage of the investors as well as the countries. So, uh, and also we have already, we now uh, open newly uh, open private sectors like transport, which means freight, cold chain and railway cables, and also health sectors, which means, uh, and uh, management consultancy service uh, sectors, advertising and promotion service, and uh, electro electronic commerce uh, uh, service, those are the newly open priority uh, areas. So now we are looking for investors investing in those, uh, the priority sectors. So we have reasons uh, when we select uh, or when we target uh, those sectors because, uh, because of the resource the, and the opportunities. And uh, for example, we have the huge uh, 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 land for cotton plantation. That is why uh, textile and apparel is the priority sectors. Uh, so now uh, we are trying to uh, integrate backward and forward linkage. Uh, and the, the other one is leather and leather products. Ethiopia is, as you know, uh, number one in Africa in livestock, which means we have a huge resource in this area. So that is why we are promoting investors investing in the, in the leather and leather products, which means we have huge uh, resource, which means natural resource. Uh, and also, uh, <coughs> Pharmaceuticals. Uh, pharmaceutical is one of uh, the priority sectors because we are importing 85% of the total basic human drugs from outside. Now we are uh, a dedicated industrial parks here in around in Addis Ababa. So for specifically for pharmaceutical companies, now we are promoting uh, big international companies investing in the pharmaceutical companies. Already some of uh, uh, some. Uh, Brand companies are already under uh, uh, underways, and some of them, some of them, already registers and uh, and under uh, constructions. So in the industrial parks, everything is fulfilled, which means uh, the investors what they can do is just only uh, import their uh, machineries and uh, install their uh, machineries and start within a short period of time. So pharmaceuticals is one of the priority sectors. Still, we are trying to, in this area, import substitutions rather than uh, uh, for, uh, and also we are trying to for export for East African markets or the regional markets. So uh, agro processing already I mentioned. And uh, tourism, already we have huge untapped tourism potentials. Uh, so uh, uh, on this area, uh, which means, uh, uh, those to visit Kenya, uh, connecting with Ethiopia, this is uh, a very good collaboration and regional integrations uh, for tourist uh, uh, destinations because Ethiopia and Kenya is neighboring countries, so Kenya is uh, very well known uh, for tourism. And uh, now uh, Ethiopia has also huge potential on these areas. So uh, that such kinds of uh, um, uh, collaboration is uh, very uh, which is which means we shared uh, common uh, markets. So energy producing energy by using any means is allowed. Under this one, we have uh, uh, public-private partnership modalities. So uh, any investors investing in hydro, uh, solar, 
uh, waste treatment, geothermal, and any means is allowed and promoted. And we have a very good incentive for those investors in those energy sectors because energy is the engine of all. So we have uh, public private partnership modality on this era with the government. And uh, uh, we have also uh, uh, why uh, do invest in Ethiopia? So growing and uh, dynamic economy. So we have an active labor force and also an abundant natural resource, as I've said because before. And uh, uh, geographical advantage, Ethiopia is, uh, is geographically uh, located, is uh, uh, also conducive enabling environment. Now we are reforming, as I said say before, a strong and effective government support, tailored incentives, and also specialized industrial parks and expanding those infrastructures. Uh, time. So, growing and dynamic economy is so an abundant natural asset framed. Uh, and also, uh, we have a tailored incentive package, uh, physical incentives, non-physical incentives, and other incentives, which means under physical incentives, we have income tax exemption periods. So, for those who invest in the manufacturing sectors, the income tax exemption period is up to eight years six years and uh, those who invest in the pharmaceutical sectors up to 12 years income tax exemption period so corporate income tax here in ethiopia is 30 percent for the net profit and also custom tax exemptions all necessary machineries equipment is spare parts also 100 percent duty free and in case if it is a loose uh, carry forward we have a loose carry forward for investors if they face uh, face loose at the beginning so and also there is also full export duty exemptions so we have also non-physical incentives we have uh, guarantee against the uh, expression which means uh, guarantee for repatriation of funds uh, dividends shares without any uh, restrictions and custom facilitations through bonded export factory and similar other schemes so those are some of uh, uh, the incentive what we have uh, providing uh, and uh, we have industrial parks uh, as already mentioned before now 12 government owned industrial parks are already operational uh, some of big international companies already there uh, investing in Ethiopia and also uh, five private uh, industrial parks are already uh, in Ethiopia so big big international companies are already investing in Ethiopia so uh, this is what I have uh, to present to you. Uh, thank you very much. If you have questions uh, uh, and uh, uh, any questions, I will be answered for the participants. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much uh, for uh, that elaborate uh, presentation. Highlighted uh, a lot of things, uh, various reforms that uh, the government of Ethiopia is focusing on uh, regulatory, improving the investment climate, a lot of also microeconomic uh, reforms, and uh, and of course, uh, last but not least, uh, trade and uh, regional integration. You've also uh, highlighted uh, the priority sectors uh, that uh, the government of Ethiopia has uh, put forth uh, in terms of investment uh, and also uh, uh, the fiscal and non-fiscal incentives uh, that are there for uh, investors. Uh, so thank you very much. Now we'll just uh, uh, kickstart uh, our Q&A session. Uh, our presenters from uh, South Sudan and Burundi are, are facing uh, problems uh, with the connection problems. Uh, so they've not been uh, able to join this meeting. Uh, but we'll kickstart our Q&A session. And uh, just to begin, I have uh, two questions that are directed uh, to both uh, presenters from Kenya and Ethiopia. Uh, so the first question is, uh, if you can just uh, run us through uh, the steps that uh, investors have to take uh, in order to have an investment in, in your specific countries. If you can just run us through, I know uh, some of you have uh, said that you have a one-stop center uh, in your agencies, but I would like to know uh, what requirements uh, investors uh, have to uh, get before 
uh, applying for an investment license and how long would uh, uh, it take for, for an investor to get uh, an investment license? And also the second question is, uh, you've uh, highlighted a lot of incentives uh, that are there. We'd also like to know that uh, if these incentives are just cut across uh, all investors or uh, there's a specific preference for, for uh, investors from uh, uh, East Africa. So those are the two questions that I think uh, we can uh, kick off with. I would like to uh, welcome a representative from Kenya to answer first, then we'll go to Ethiopia. Uh, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Um, I think second question was not clear to me. Um, yeah. Even to me, not clear here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if I can repeat, uh, there's yes. a lot of incentives that uh, uh, you've mentioned uh, in terms of uh, attracting investors. We wanted to know if these, these incentives are for all foreign investors and local investors, or there's a specific preference let's say for investors from East Africa, from EAC, is there okay, specific okay. preference or, or uh, it's, it's for all investors? Clear, thank you so much. Um, I think then for Kenya, let me just uh, run through the steps for investing in Kenya. Uh, anybody investing in Kenya first, uh, having made the decision is first is to start a legal ent a registration of a legal entity in Kenya. And the registration of uh, companies, uh, these legal entities in Kenya is done online. There's a portal, a government portal, where you find a number of government services. And so one will go there and register the company. Once legal entity registered, now, the Kenya Investment Authority will now take over the process of now ensuring that the investor will get services under one roof through a single window through the one-stop center, depending on the sector he or she will be investing in. Um, of course, different sectors and different activities will have different timelines. Uh, if you are starting your own construction, you are not locating within any already existing zones, or structure, both physical and for structure, and then you are starting, you have, of course, the timeline will be a bit uh, longer where you start now seeking environmental impact assessment on the area you are investing in alongside now getting the building plans appro approval from the, the, the local county, the county uh, uh, government where you are located. So this will take that. But for what you call investment license, I maybe in Kenya we call it investment certificate. This is given once Lester has means of environment, health, and safety. And we issue this immediately. The investor has requested uh, for this investment certificate. But the procedure is we visit the investor and ascertain readiness to start operation. So that is the procedure. Different sectors will definitely have different procedures for investing and uh, different license. Uh, but the first phase is, as I said, start a legal entity, then go to the one-stop center to get the approvals and licensing uh, for various approvals and licenses that you require. Now, for the incentives uh, in Kenya, incentives are some are sector-based, and others are also based on where you are investing. For instance, if you invest in the special economic zone, where you get the first 10 years, you get the 10% corporate tax instead of 30, and then the next 10 years, you get a reduced uh, rate of 15%, and you pay the duty, full duty of 30% after the 21st year. This is not for any specific group uh, or local. Uh, investors or foreign. It is for all investors who locate within the special economic zone. 
and also for people who invest in export oriented investment and look at within the EPZ, whether you are local or foreign, you are all entitled to the same incentives without any bias or a preference. Thank you. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I uh, can move to Ethiopia. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Maria. Um, uh, so, uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, the Ethiopian Investment Commission is providing one-stop shop service. Every service is uh, provided in one window uh, at uh, uh, in, in, in one building. So, uh, regarding getting investment license, investors uh, 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 should follow some steps, uh, uh, steps, uh, but uh, the steps vary slightly depending on the business from under which the investors plan to operate their business because they are, uh, in Ethiopia, there are three, com three kinds of company formations, which means sole proprietorship, private limited company, and branch company. Uh, so between those uh, company formation, uh, there is a slight change, but the procedure is more or less the same. Uh, for example, uh, those who invest in a sole proprietorship company, uh, they follow uh, around seven steps. At the beginning, uh, investors can collect information from the commissions, which means uh, we, we will provide the necessary information and uh, facilitation and uh, guiding the investors. And after then, uh, we collect application uh, uh, forms. We have an application form and company registration form. And also we have sample memorandum of understanding and article of associations. And we will provide that one and we will uh, fill that application form on behalf of the companies. Or the and then uh, submit this application with uh, passport and visa, start a new investment permit application and in licensing and registration department. So, uh, 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 and the other one is to collect bank permit. And then uh, there is, uh, after we authenticate the MOU and uh, article of association, uh, we write a letter to open bank account by the name of the company. And then uh, that investors will go to one of the bank, uh, one letter from National Bank and one letter to one of the branch uh, bank and open bank account under the name of the, com the bank, uh, the, the name of the, the company, because there is capital requirement for foreign investors. If the company is fully foreign company, uh, there is 200,000 capital requirement, which means uh, to check the commitment of the investors. This capital requirement is not freezed, not blocked. After investment license, they can use uh, for their uh, capital workers. If it is uh, the company's full joint, joint venture with locals, 150,000 uh, US dollar. Uh, so uh, this is the, there is a capital requirement. Uh, and uh, investment license, business license, work permit, registration work permit, and resident ID, all uh, this issue, uh, those uh, kinds of services issued in Ethiopian investment uh, commissions. So in case of uh, sole proprietorship, there is no uh, no need to MOA and article of association. And in private limited company, uh, uh, already as I said, uh, we will guide the investors and uh, uh, there are steps to follow uh, and uh, we will serving the investors hand holding service. So giving uh, the right information up to filling the application form and also authenticating MOU and article of association, and then we'll write a letter to bank, and then the bank, uh, the, and they'll go to bank and open bank account. They will transfer uh, that required amount. And then after they transfer the required amount, the bank will give them a receipt. And then uh, when they bring the receipt, we will automatically will give them investment license, work permit, resident ID, tax identification numbers, and then they will proceed to the implementation phase regarding land issue and, the, uh, and other utilities. There is also a department called aftercare and facilitation department will facilitate this one. 
regarding uh, branch company, uh, they can they if it is a branch company, uh, 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 and uh, they bring all legal documents from the sister company overseas, and then we will register that uh, legal legal documents as a branch company, and then uh, we will uh, give uh, a license and uh, as mentioned before for the policies. And regarding uh, 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 incentive package in Ethiopia, there is no any dis discrimination between foreign investors and uh, domestic investors. The incentive package is the same, but the invest the but uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, the investment uh, incentives for income tax exemption for the sector is sector to sector is not the same. But between foreigners and domestic is, there is no any discrimination, it is the same, but there is uh, different uh, investment uh, schemes for especially, uh, for especially for income tax exemption period. Uh, as I said, for manufacturing sectors, it is higher than uh, that of uh, uh, service sectors, even service sectors, there is no uh, income tax exemption period. Uh, unless there is no any uh, difference between uh, foreigners and uh, domestic in the same. Thank you. Um, thank you very much uh, for all your responses. I'll just uh, uh, go into to the second round of uh, questions. And uh, for Kenya, uh, we have a question that uh, wants to know uh, what reforms uh, that the government of Kenya uh, has put uh, forward or is planning to put forward in order to attract uh, investments in, in Kenya. I think we've had a lot uh, from Ethiopia in this area. I would also like to hear uh, from uh, Kenya. Also, the second question to, to Kenya. Uh, it is uh, well known that uh, Kenya is a leading investor in, in EAC and uh, cross-border investments. So what will be done as a region in, in order to continue attracting uh, more cross-border investments? I would repeat the question. Kenya being a leading investor on, on EAC cross-border investments, uh, what do you think uh, should be done as a region uh, to continue attracting uh, more cross-border investments? And the second question uh, to Ethiopia is uh, what measures uh, are put in place uh, by the government of Ethiopia in order to protect investors in Ethiopia, especially the minority ones? So what measures have been put in place uh, in order to uh, protect investors in Ethiopia, especially the minority ones? Uh, so thank you. OK, um, to start with the first question on the reforms, um, a number of reforms have been undertaken by the government um, from the year 2002 to date. The government has uh, actually abolished, consolidated, and uh, actually and then uh, streamlined the licensing regime in the country, where a number of licenses have been removed, a few of them consolidated into one, and also simplified. This has actually helped businesses to now, instead of going for uh, very many licenses, like trade license from this agency, then this other license from another ministry. So this has happened, and it's uh, one area, another round of maybe thinking to even to simplify further is also ongoing. The other one is uh, government has also simplified access to government uh, services by way of creating uh, a platform where investors get all services all under one roof. Now, especially for SMEs, we have what we call Huduma Centers, which exist in all our 47 counties, and they get all these licenses. But uh, then for also big investors, where we have now the one-stop center. Now, access to services also through digital uh, platform, where through the e-citizen platform where government services are not, ne not necessarily going to be, uh, you know, obtained through physical visits to offices, but 
applying online and getting the licenses from the Now, on matters to the cross border and uh, Kenya being the, you know, the biggest investor within the region, and it is true, and we encourage Kenyans to expand the region also to ensure that the market is, uh, you know, you are to, uh, I think somebody has muted and started. Now, um, to encourage more. Uh, Mr. Guracha, please unmute your mic. Oh, sorry, sorry. So muted. I don't know what. Huh? You were muted for about 20 seconds. Okay, I think it's when I started uh, the second question. Yes. All right, then. Uh, so I was saying for us to at encourage more cross-border investment with the ESC region, I think we need to fast track on our uh, continue working together, removing uh, those um, non-tariff barriers and encourage, you know, the going towards the, of course, I don't know, this may be political process, the monetary union, Currently, we do have the common market and the customs union. I think we need to further go towards, you know, uh, encouraging, you know, any investor coming to Kenya, maybe accessing the region without requiring maybe, uh, you know, further uh, visa and the rest. Maybe going towards as the, what as what is currently happening under EU. If we go through that, then I'm sure we'll be able to encourage more cross-border from Kenya to say Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, South Sudan, Ethiopia, and then of course vice versa. So I think it's a process of uh, for us working on what we have already uh, uh, the gains we've made and with further improvement on our. Um, uh, movement of persons and goods and services, then we'll be able to have more cross-border investment uh, within the region. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Guracha. You can move to Ethiopia. Uh, thank you, uh, moderator, Ms. Maria. Uh, regarding the second questions uh, about uh, measures uh, protecting minority investors, uh, yes, of course, uh, uh, this, uh, this issue uh, is uh, uh, under uh, improving issue of uh, doing business, which means it is a part of national economic competitiveness and job agenda issues. Uh, now the government of Ethiopia is identified as priority structural reform area under the homegrown economic reform programs. National flagship initiatives to improve Ethiopia is uh, easy of doing business, which means launched by uh, our Prime Minister uh, Bihamed. So regarding uh, 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 regarding uh, measures uh, uh, measures protecting minority investors, already defined reforms and implementing, and there are also owners for these areas. Already uh, the key indicators already. Uh, uh, sorted out. So uh, there are some key indicators, as you know, starting of business, dealing with construction permit, getting electricity registration and uh, uh, registering uh, property, getting credit, protecting minority investors. Uh, around uh, 12 uh, key indicators already identified uh, and defined. So there are also leading institutions uh, also defined. So protecting minority uh, investors 
already the federal attorney general uh, is doing and uh, uh, making on these areas. Uh, so already the indicators are identified, the lead institutions are already identified. So regarding this issue, protecting of minority investors already given to the federal attorney generals. So under this uh, attorney generals, uh, uh, making uh, uh, and protecting minority investors and will have uh, such uh, uh, measures with these uh, lead institutions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we are wrapping up. We just have one more question for each of you, and then we are going to close this session. Uh, there's a lot of initiatives uh, in, in East Africa with regards to uh, marketing uh, the EAC as a single investment uh, destination. Uh, sorry, single investment destination. Uh, uh, we have a lot of initiatives with regards to harmonizing uh, the fiscal incentives and, and others. And being practitioners of, of investment promotion uh, agencies, uh, do you think uh, this will be successful and uh, what should be done uh, by uh, EAC uh, governments in order to make sure that uh, this initiative is a success? Thank you. Um, uh, I think for my uh, my take is uh, the you know uh, there were times when maybe even through EABC we were able to even market a, a joint marketing of the East Africa region to uh, potential investors out there, and um, I think this is possible. The only thing is uh, if we are, the countries are committed to those reforms uh, which are earmarked within the East African uh, community uh, to be observed and uh, then the timelines are put in to ensure that uh, we can have our, you know, uh, the, the, we are realized. This as a common, as a common one market, and that uh, investors who come to any eight of the market, invest in any of the countries, will be able to to, 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 to access other countries as just one market. And uh, I think this is doable. And if once we focus on the bigger picture of uh, what the uh, bigger East African market will benefit that in each of these countries. I think that's my response. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it is, I think, based on the, the country's uh, government commitment and uh, uh, take account uh, and take into consideration of uh, uh, such initi initiative is uh, uh, successful or not. It is based on uh, it is uh, the country's or the government's uh, uh, commitment. If uh, East African market is, uh, is a huge market that if the government committed to reform and check their uh, uh, challenges and uh, also uh, constraints regarding uh, uh, investments, I think such kinds of uh, uh, initiatives will be uh, successful. So I think on my view, it depending on the uh, government's commitment and reforming of uh, uh, issues related to investment and business. Uh, I think if it is uh, uh, collaborating uh, at a regional and uh, level and also coordinating uh, uh, each others, uh, it should be successful. So on uh, on my view, it, it is fall under uh, the government's uh, co commitment and. Uh, uh, actions to take uh, measure. Thank you. Uh, 
thank you uh, very much, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for tuning in uh, in this uh, conference. Uh, we had an objective of uh, showcasing investment opportunities in, in East Africa. And this is with, with the view of uh, attracting uh, foreign direct investment uh, as, as our economies uh, recover uh, from the socioeconomic effects of uh, COVID-19. Uh, so on behalf of uh, the CEO of EABC, I would like to thank each one and uh, each, each one of you for uh, participating fully for these uh, two days uh, that we had this presentation. I would, like, I would like to also thank our presenters uh, from Ethiopia and Kenya uh, for devoting time uh, to uh, really engage with uh, uh, the participants and uh, uh, making the presentations. Uh, so on behalf of the CEO, I would like to uh, thank you all. And for the participants, uh, we will be, be, we'll be sharing uh, all the presentations uh, uh, from the presenters uh, through uh, the EAB, EABC uh, membership uh, database. And for others, you can still um, uh, visit our website and all our social media pages uh, in order to access uh, all the presentations. So once again, uh, thank you very much and I wish you all a fruitful day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.